Calculus Math 11. Section 3.1 Quadratic Equations in Vertex Form So we talked in class about the four conic sections, and in particular we talked about the parabola and its various applications. Well today I want to get more into the concepts about graphing a parabola when we see this particular kind of quadratic equation in its vertex form. Now a reminder that the quadratic or squared equations that we'll be looking at in this unit will have x squared but not y. That's why they're functions because it's the x squared and not the y value that's being squared. In chapter 2 we did look at the equation of a circle as being a quadratic equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared and of course as we discussed all four of these conic sections are the result of graphing a different kind of quadratic or squared equation. If I enter y equals x squared on my calculator I can clearly see that the points on the graph correspond to the table of values when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 9, and so on. And I can do that even by using the trace feature on the calculator and press, pressing 2. When x is 2, y is 4. For 3, we go to 9. For 5, 25. Negative 4, 16. We can see those values quite clearly. But what happens if I change the equation? What if I graph y equals 3x squared, or y equals 8x squared? Well, you could graph those here in your calculator using the extra y2 and y3 settings. I'm going to go over and do it on a different application on a website that you're free to use as well. This website is called Desmos, desmos.com. And if you want to go in there, you can set up an account. It ties in with your Google account, and you can do some really cool math things in there. So I'm going to use Desmos to graph y equals ax squared, and I'm going to have it change the value of a to different numbers by using this slider here. And I'll just set that in motion right now. And you can see that as the value of a increases from 1 up towards 10, that the parabola is getting taller and taller, or basically getting skinnier. And again, as a decreases back down towards 1, it goes back to the original shape in black of y equals x squared. I'm pausing it here. Notice that as a decreases from 1 down towards 0, the parabola is getting shorter or wider until we get right to a equals 0, at which point in time we just have the horizontal line y equals 0. If we continue on across into negative values, you see that the same shape is happening, but that the parabola has now been reflected across the x-axis, and for negative a values, is opening downwards. And again, as a continues to decrease past negative 1, it now gets taller and skinnier as the parabola shape. So that's great for values of a, but what if we do something else? What if rather than multiplying x squared by some number a, we go with a different equation? What if we do y equals x squared plus q? So let's take a look here at what happens now with x squared plus q. I'll set the values of q in motion, and we can see that as q increases, the parabola simply lifts upwards, and as q decreases, it's going back downwards. So it just causes a vertical translation, moving the parabola up and down q units. And again, you can try this on your calculator, if you like, with different values of q. And now we're going to try one more transformation here. Rather than adding something to x squared or multiplying x squared by a value, we're going to take and first subtract a value from x before we square it. So I've got x minus p all squared. What happens as p increases? You can see that for positive values of p, the parabola is translated p units to the right. And for negative values of p, the parabola is translated p units to the left. So that right here, when p is negative 5.6, it has been moved 5.6 units to the left. 
Well, finally, we can take all of these transformations together into one equation, y equals a x minus p squared plus q, and put these sliders into motion. So first I'll get a moving, and we can see the parabola gets skinnier or wider. Now I'll get q moving, and the parabola moves up or down. Now I'll get p in motion, which now causes the parabola to translate from left to right. Now let's put all of this together and come up with a common set of language for this. If we have a quadratic equation for a parabola in the form y equals a times x minus p squared plus q, this is what we call the vertex form. And over here on the parabola, this point is called the vertex. You'll notice that if the parabola is opening upwards, this is the lowest point. And if the parabola were opening downwards, this would be the highest point. And these are both bits of information that we can get directly out of the vertex form. For starters, the location of the vertex is always at the coordinates p, q. And we can tell whether the parabola is opening up or down depending on the value of a. Likewise, if you look at the parabola carefully, you can see clearly that the left side and the right side are symmetrical to each other we would say that they're symmetrical about the vertical line running through the vertex. That would be a vertical line whose equation is x equals p, and this is called the axis of symmetry. Now, if the parabola is opening upwards, it has a minimum value. If it's opening downwards, it has a maximum value. But either way, that minimum or maximum value is that y is equal to q, and the only time it happens is when x is equal to p. In Math 10, you talked about the concept of the domain and the range when you referred to functions. The domain is all of the x values that are possible as input values in this function. For quadratic equations, there is no restriction on the x value. You can square any x number that you want. And so the domain is the set of all x values such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. And what about the range? Well, the range will be real numbers, but it won't be all of them. If this parabola is opening upwards, then we have a minimum value of q, and the range will be that y is greater than or equal to q and is an element of the real numbers. And of course, if the parabola is opening downwards, the range would be that y is less than or equal to q and is an element of the set of real numbers. Okay, well let's suppose that I was given the equation y equals negative one-third x minus two squared plus five and I'm asked to sketch it and give this information. But, oh man, the website's down. I can't run that. And, ah, my graphing calculator. The batteries are dead. Darn it. Well, no matter. I can use what I already know about the values of a, p, and q to sketch the graph and to write down some information about the function. For instance, I always know that the vertex is located at p, comma, q, and in this case, p is the value 2 and q is 5. And I know that the direction of opening is downwards because we have a equal to negative one-third. The axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Since the parabola is opening downward it has a maximum value not a minimum and the maximum value is y equals 5 and this only occurs when x is equal to 2. What's the domain? Well, the domain for these is always the set of all x values such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. <clears throat> and the range is the set of all y values such that y, now which way is this opening again? Oh yeah, downwards. So y is less than or equal to 5 and is an element of the set of real numbers. And I can do a sketch of this based off of the information that I know. So here's an xy plane, and we know that the vertex is located at 2, 5, so that's somewhere right up here. It's opening downwards. It's going to be wider than a typical x squared because the a value is 1 third. So let's have it opening wide something like this. 
it looks symmetrical right here at x equals 2. That's it. Easy. Well, let's try another example now. From a point half a meter above the ground, Charlie lobs a tennis ball up to a height of 20 meters. Assuming that the flight path of the ball is parabolic and it reaches its maximum height when it's 5 meters in front of where Charlie hit it, write an equation that represents the flight path of the tennis ball. Note that this function will be giving the height of the ball depending on its horizontal distance from Charlie. Well, let's sketch this out a bit here. We can put the point of impact right here at the vertical y-axis, say that's zero meters, and obviously this parabola is opening downwards, and when it's five meters ahead, we've got it up here at a height of 20 meters up in the air. And then another five meters ahead from that, it actually would be right here at again 0.5 meters above the ground. Uh, and of course it'll hit the ground just shortly after that. Well, we know the vertex for this parabola is right here at the point five comma 20, and so that's our p and q values. We just don't happen to know the a value at this point in time, but we can easily get it. y equals a x minus p squared plus q. We've got y equals a x minus 5 squared plus 20. Now we do also know this point right here. We know that when x is 0 that the height of this ball is 0 0.5 meters and so we can put those two values in as x and y giving us 0.5 is equal to a times 0 minus 5 squared plus 20 and solving for a this gives us 25a plus 20 is equal to 0 0.5 getting negative 19.5 over 25 is equal to a or I think in this case we could probably just turn this into a decimal number here of negative 0 0.78 do a quick check on your graphing calculator if you want confirming the points that we know but I'm happy to say that the equation for this particular flight path of this tennis ball is y is equal to negative 0.78 x minus 5 squared plus 20. Here are two more questions for you to do on your own. The first one, given the equation, sketch the parabola, list the information. And the second one here, given the parabola shown below and the information about it, determine the quadratic equation for it in vertex form. So that's all for now. I apologize for taking so long to get this video up here for you guys. But until next time, keep your pencil sharp, and I'll see you in class.